Turning your Bibles with me to Ephesians chapter 4 as we continue our study. Pick it up where we left off a couple of weeks ago. If you're physically able to stand, we're going to read Ephesians 4 verses 25 through 32. So if you're physically able to stand, please stand as we read the Word of God. You can either follow me in your Bibles or up on the screen, verses 25 through 32. Therefore, having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands, so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. Heavenly Father, once again I ask that you would fill this room with your Holy Spirit. Help us to learn the things that we need to learn. Help us to know the things that we need to know. And may you receive all the glory. Amen. Please be seated. So as I made up these notes, and I, and I really didn't look real close, and this morning as I was struggling trying to sleep, I thought, my Lord, they have so many blanks to fill in today. (laughs) I am so sorry, but you are sitting here today. This is one of my seminars I teach from this text to other pastors and college Bible students and missionaries when I teach counseling. So it's not so much I'm going to preach at you today. I will be teaching you from the text. And it's a very uh, wonderful way to learn about how to communicate. Part one will be the first two rules will be today. Whatever we don't finish this morning, we will finish tonight. Next week will be part two, rules number three and four, just to let you know. And if you don't come tonight, oh, well, no, I, uh, you can either listen on tape or whatever. But uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to hurry through this because it is important. Where have, the, where have these people come from? When he's writing to these Ephesians, these believers, he has, he has told them, as we learned in verses 17 through 24, that no longer walk as the Gentiles do, because they are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God, and they're ignorant. Why? Because their hearts are just hard. And they're callous. They have no sensitivity. They have given them up to they have given themselves up to sensuality because he says you have a new nature. So put put that old self off. Put on the new self. Be renewed in the spirit of your minds to think biblically. And then I get to thinking, why why did Paul write this next? Why did he write uh, 25 to 32, even though he wasn't going through 25 to 32. Why did he put communication as such a premium here while evidently these people had a problem with it? As, I don't know whether you knew this, 
as most churches do. And I think about the company that I worked for for 30 years, communications company. And we would often say, this is a multi-billion dollar company with satellites. And the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. This is important because it, it, it was a problem back then. And it is a problem now within the church and within our families. This is not just for church. This is something you can take home. And what I have uh, done through counseling, I have had counselees write these four rules out and put them on the refrigerator. So they're always visible. And then by the time they're done, they have to... They have to be able to memorize them. Okay? And remember verses 17 through 24? My students overseas usually have to memorize that whole passage. See how easy I was on you guys? They usually have to memorize the whole thing in like three days. And, you know, I don't think I could do it, but I make them do it. Four rules of communication. Communication is vital not only within our church, but within our lives. And the text speaks very clearly to that. And those of you who have been married for many years know what I'm talking about, how communication is vital. Vital, vital, vital. Those of you who are in the workplace or have been there know how communication is so vital to know what the other person is doing. Every time that when I was playing competitively and I would, I would be on the ice with my teammates, I would look around as we were lining up and I'd say, and I would just point to each and every one of them, remember what your jobs are out here. Remember what you have to do. They knew it, but I still had to communicate it. And how many times have we told our kids, you know, I want you to do this. And, and they always say, well, I know, you know, you don't have to tell me. You don't. And, and um, what, what did I start with our kids now? Oh, uh, they have a habit, or they used to. They have a habit, they had one, of saying, I, I know. And the I know now has been replaced with yes. But this is a wonderful text. So here we go. We, we have a, a lot of work to do. So let, at least, let's see what the Lord is going to try and teach us. Let's look at verse 25 here. Therefore, now remember where, where he's just come from. Telling them, no longer walk like the Gentiles. Okay? Off with the old self. On with the new self. Thinking biblically. Okay? Therefore, having putting Having put away falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. First rule, be honest. Don't just put off lying, but speak the truth. And it is a command. You speak. Why? Because people cannot read our minds. They can't. I'm going to let you fill in these blanks before I start spitting here. So, honesty is more than not lying. So when he when when he says when he's teaching there to be honest, don't just put off lying. It means to discard it. Let it go. Lying, and you know what? You know what other thing is? Another part of lying is you want to know? Exaggerating. Has anybody ever exaggerated of how of how well they've done with something, or or how they they have just done something really, really, really wonderful, or they did something wonderful? And I just want to tell you how wonderful I am. 
And a lot of people exaggerate, and yes, even believers exaggerate on their taxes, which was just up a few days ago. But lying, could, lying as, as what we would perceive, what we know it as, is, is just telling something completely false. Well, lying can also be fudging on the truth a little bit. Exaggerating. A friend of mine, that who I know, as acquaintances, has shared in her testimony that she, she loved to exaggerate about things. So she finally, at a crusade, asked these dear people who she, she knew for quite a long time to hold her accountable to telling the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Because she tended to exaggerate. Okay? But what he is saying here is it is a command. Try not to duck the hard issues. People cannot read our mind. And we lie because sometimes we, don't, we, we purpose to withhold or deceive. How many times have we done that? Well, you know what? How much of the truth do they really need to know? Or, you know, I didn't have nothing to do with it. You better go talk to somebody else. You know, they, people will. Now, remember, this is a problem going on in, in these churches right now. Paul is not just writing this because he feels like it. Paul is writing to them to teach them to be honest, how to communicate, to put off lying and speak the truth. Not ducking the hard issues. And how many times do we do that? But it is a command. Let her be there is speak the truth. Why? Because problems cannot be solved unless they are expressed. And, and when I say uh, from, the, from the former point, honesty is more than not lying. You know what honesty is? Honesty is listening. That's uh, a dear uh, classmate of mine would always remind me because I'm, I'm horrible. Let me tell you. I'm horrible at names. And I have purpose to train. I'm trying to train myself to really, when you meet somebody and shake their hand, oh, 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 yeah, how you doing? Okay. And then it's like, oh, man, what was their name again? You know? But, but, but I've been purposing to, to really focus on listening when I'm introduced to somebody to try and remember their name. But problems cannot be solved unless... They are expressed. And honesty means listening, even when you don't want to. And I didn't tell you, but I was going to share this. So forget, I'm going to ask for forgiveness right now before I share this. But when there's a problem that we've had being married for 30 years this year, it's easy for me to express. Now, think about this. It's easy for me to express what's on my heart. Not so easy for her. Okay? And, those, and, and one spouse is usually different from the other. It's easy for me to say, whoa, wait a minute. Hey, come on. Come on. And then she'll be upset. Well, come on, tell me. And she, she can't get it out. It's not so easy for her to express that. Honesty means listening, too. Because the Lord has taught me patience, even though there are many times and I still don't have time for it. He, he, he has taught me patience. And Cheryl keeps reminding me that the Lord has brought her into my life to teach me patience. It's true. It's, yeah, see, she said amen. 
because when I want to get the problem out, she's there and, I, and, and I'll say, come, come on. And she just can't get it out. So one of the ways that I have learned how to communicate is to not say nothing. I wait until she can share. I've, I've had to learn that. And those of you who are married know what I'm talking about. But Paul is saying, be honest, and that includes... Don't just put off lying, but speak the truth. Letter B is speak the truth. Letter C is dishonesty is out. Dishonesty is out. There are examples, I gave you a reference there, of outright deceit. And there's conflict between body language, tones, and the content of what we say. Why? Why do I say that? Because my wife can read my body language like a book. I don't have to say one word, and she knows what I'm thinking. She knows. See? Because if I'm not happy... I'll just kind of, you'll see my mouth just kind of, well, yeah, you know. Don't look at me like that. You know, I'm not, she knows that. She knows how to read me like a book or tones. Honey, did you do that? Yeah. Sure did. And says, so oh, yeah, sure, yeah, glad to do it, dear. So, did you take care of it? Yeah, sure did. Even though I was busy with other things. Yeah, yeah. So, dishonesty is out. There can be outright deceit. There can be... Con- now, remember, communication, be honest. There can be conflict between body language, tones, and the content of what we say and how we say it, disguising the message with innuendos, insinuating something. Oh, by the way, I took care of that. I know you were too busy. Glad to do it for you, Russ, even though you were too busy. Communication is so important within our lives here. And she can read me like a book. People will ask, has this ever happened to you? You will ask somebody, what's the matter? And what will they say? Nothing. Nothing. No, dear, what is the matter? Nothing. Nothing. Are you sure? Yes. People can read us by our body language, by the tone, by the content of what we say and how we say it. And we can disguise the message with innuendos, giving a vague hint. Man, it's so important so important, not only within the church, but we learn this in our lives of how we communicate with each other. Be honest. Tell the truth. That's what he's saying here. Put away falsehood. Let each each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor for we are members. He's saying, come on, people. We're of the same body. You've got to tell the truth. Easier said than done. So remember, the first rule is be honest. Be honest. The second rule, verses 26 and 27. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. This is the one that is very much a struggle for many people. Point, uh, rule number two, keep current. Keep current. 
Get angry, but don't sin. Lying is sin. Anger may not be. Anger is sinful when it is used to attack others. Proverbs 25, 28. A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. Anger is sinful when it is used to attack others or self. Keep current. Rule number two. You know how I've learned this lesson in a very, very big way? Was all of a sudden, there'll be a church member. And they'll just disappear. They'll stop coming. And when I was the associate pastor with uh, Grace Church, i look at Dr. Vanner and say, well, what's going on with them? And I don't know. Well, let's go see. Let's go visit them. So, hey, haven't seen you guys in about three or four weeks. Is everything okay? Well, I just want to tell you, Pastor, we're not coming back. Oh, no. Why? What happened? What, you know, what I do? Well, I tell you what. You probably don't remember this, but there was three years ago. Oh, that happens. Oh, let me tell you, that happens all the time. Remember, Pastor, remember that one Easter four years ago? Remember when you said, and I'm like going, you've got to be kidding me. Well, you know what? Rule number two, keep current. But there will actually be people within the church that will withhold because they're angry about something or they're disappointed or they're bitter and they'll just hang on to that till finally they'll, they will just walk away from the church and the pastor and the other church members don't have a clue. But they're mad. And I'll show them. I ain't going back. That's it. That's it. So now... We, we have to say, oh, I am so sorry. Would you please forgive me? But people leave churches. He says, get angry, but don't sin. Direct your anger at evil, injustice, immorality, ungodliness. Christ's light anger is not concerned about self. Remember this. Christ's like anger is not concerned about self. What is it concerned about? The reputation of Jesus Christ. Did what we learned last Sunday, was Jesus angry when he walked into the temple? In John chapter 2, you bet he was. What were they doing to his father's house? Making it just, you know what? A regular store. You know what? The day's going to come. Can I tell you? The day's coming when believers in our country are going to have to get just a little bit angry. Well, still speaking the truth in love, but you know what? They're going to have to get a little bit angry at ungodliness and immorality and evil and injustice. And as Jesus Christ walked into the temple and just overturning everything, man, the day's coming. The church will be persecuted. We'll, we'll no longer feel comfortable sitting here. The day's coming. Keep current. Failure to solve problems Daily means we are giving place or a foothold to Satan. Did I miss something here? Okay. Well, it's not up there. Let me... Okay. Lying is sin. Anger may not be. Anger is energy to be used to solve problems. Anger is energy to be used to solve problems. Anger is sinful when it is used to attack others. That's, that verse is up there. Or self. 
You know how you can get angry at yourself? Has anybody ever thought or felt that they did something so embarrassing and so stupid or, or they made some big mistake that they'll just stew on it? You know? They'll just stew on it. Oh, I can't believe I did that. Can't believe it. Never giving themselves a break. Sometimes we, we, we judge ourselves harsher than God does. Forgiveness is easier from Him sometimes than us forgiving ourselves. You know, letting it go. But we stew about it. Failure to solve problems daily means we are giving place or a foothold to Satan, opening the way to, to disappointment, resentment, bitterness, and hatred, distorting subsequent problems. One of the great pieces of advice my mother gave us when Cheryl and I got married, my mother was not a believer then. She said, never, ever, ever go to bed mad. Never. Never go to bed mad. Work it out. Even if you're up all night. And when Cheryl finally learned that, no. <laughs> I was seeing if you were awake. <laughs> Never go to bed mad, but keep current. Don't believe whoever said this. Time heals all wounds. Baloney. Nope. Keep current. Stop clamming up. Oh, and you know this. You know these people. Cutting off communication by crying. Cheryl quit crying. And then she can't get the words out. Or some people would say, say because they don't want to talk about the problem, she'll just start crying. <laughs> you know. No, 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 no. Come on, let's work it out. <laughs> or the threatening, the volcanic eruption. I'm going to blow up. You say one more word, and I am just going to lose my temper. Or bottom lining. Let me just tell you this. We'll end this argument right here. All I have to say is that's bottom lining. You cut off communication by saying, all I got to say is this. Deal with problems quickly. Tomorrow will have problems of its own. Very true. Scripture teaches that. Deal with problems quickly. Why? Because. Turn to Matthew chapter 5. I didn't put it in there. I just added this. 23. So if you are offering a gift at the altar, listen to this. Remember, we're talking about the point. Point number two. Rule number two. Keep current. So if you're offering your gift at the altar and there remember your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother. Then come and offer your gift. The key word is there, go. Take care of it. Go. You know what go means? Go means go. And go means go to the point that you talk to the person. The worst thing that has come out in our lifetime for dealing with problems, you know what it is? Email. Go to your computer and send them an email. No. If you've got the opportunity, if you can talk to that person one-on-one, face-to-face, that's what the Scripture is teaching. If they're long distance, it may require a phone call. Many times we use email as a cop-out. Go. 
deal with problems quickly. In fact, a situation back home in, in a church where the pastor, the associate pastor, was accused of something. And he denied it and resigned rather than cause a split. So he happened, to, he was in a church in the Midwest. And it wasn't too long after that, he was called to be a pastor on the East Coast. I think it was Maryland or something like that. Come to find out, the elders found out that this pastor was actually telling the truth. And you know what they did? They hopped on a plane and went out to the East Coast and sought reconciliation because they were wrong. Go. Keep current. Deal with problems quickly. Be reconciled. Face to face. The last resort. Can I tell you something? The last resort is an email or a letter. Last resort. Stop clamming up. Six questions to ask yourself before... Bringing up a sticky problem. Do I have the facts right? This is important. Why? Because I have failed with this as a biblical counselor. Where I had situations between parents and children, young Adults, and I didn't get all the facts first. Very important. Proverbs 18.13, if one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. Should love cover it? Is it sinful? Is it hindering growth? Should love cover it? Sometimes in our very upstanding Christianity, you know, our religiosity, when somebody fails, boy, don't we like to tell them. But the time may come along, but you know what? Are you just going to let love cover it? You know why? Because the more we grow, the more we tolerate. Think about that. The more you spiritually grow, the more you tolerate. Is my timing right? Is my attitude right? Am I really trying to help the other person? Or am I really trying to make them feel bad? Or am I really trying to make me look good? Do I purpose to make my words loving? And have I asked God, have I asked for God's help? Everybody got him? Still writing? Rule number one is, oh, you forgot. Be honest. Absolutely. Rule number one is, be honest. Rule number two, keep current. Deal with problems quickly. Absolutely. Very, very, very important that that we do that. Because communication is so vital, not only within our lives, within our families, but within the church. To speak the truth in love, deal with problems quickly and honesty. Speak the truth in in love. It's got to be done that way. Man, you know what? We have, we, we have churches splitting because somebody... If, be, you, know what a, you know what kind of a family... You know what kind of dysfunctional family puts the fun in dysfunction? The kind that if there was an elephant sitting in the middle of the living room, nobody would say it. 
Nobody would say nothing. Oh, don't say nothing. Why? Dad will get mad. Or mom will get mad. Hmm? Do you know families like that? That they'd rather not deal with problems. They, they, oh, but, oh. No, don't say nothing. Happens in the church too. Happens in the church too. So, we can reflect on these first two rules corporately as Calvary Bible Church, but what about your own personal lives? The bigger question is, can I ask you something? Have you caused an offense or sinned against a fellow brother, sister in Christ that you haven't cleared things up with? Matthew chapter 5, go. Go and be reconciled. This is what I use when I'm counseling. First one to act like Christ wins. Can't find the exact quote in Scripture on that. But the principle is there. First one who acts like Jesus wins. Go and be reconciled. Why? Because the home church that I grew up When I became a believer in Jesus Christ and I knew, I knew that they were not teaching the Word of God, I left. Because I found out by learning this book that I was responsible for my family and teaching them correctly. So I left. And I had been there since I was a baby. And I hurt them. To them, I'm still little Jimmy. I hurt them. And after learning this, I called. I called the secretary of the church. And I said, I need to come back and make things right. Will you allow me the opportunity to stand before the congregation and ask for forgiveness. Well, we really, really appreciate you wanting to do that, but no. No. Sure? No. Okay. But I was willing to do it. The same way these elders were willing to fly out to the East Coast to make it right and be reconciled with this pastor. There's communication problems within our world, within our families, within your life, within Calvary Bible Church. There are problems. Be honest and keep current. And we'll see what the Lord teaches us next time. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this time. Lord, it is so important that we learn these things. Lord, help us in a mighty way to take this to heart. But Lord, there are hearts in this sanctuary here that are troubled because there, there, are, there is unresolved problems within families, within spouses, within this church, within brothers and sisters in Christ. I ask you, Lord, right now to speak to their hearts that they would take your word seriously Get up from their altar and go and be reconciled and that they're honest and ask for forgiveness for not bringing this up sooner. Oh, Lord, there, there are, Lord, there is bitterness in people's hearts. There is anger. Lord, help us to learn these things. Help us to embrace them. Lord, help us to seek reconciliation to those you have laid on our hearts. And I ask these things in your name. Amen.